Hello Riff Ruff, welcome back to the channel, I'm Ben. Here we are after many hours of gameplay and tests. Now it's time for me to give my verdict on Firewall Ultra. I'll start right away by saying that the format of this review is different. I cannot show you parts of my gameplay because I don't own PSVR 2. However, I played it for a few dozens of hours on a friend's PSVR 2 who kindly provided. I had no way to record contents, so enjoy some images captured here and there. What matter is that, as always? It won't be a mishmash of personal opinions like the graphics are nice since the concept of beauty changes from person to person so in this review I will talk about the game in a technical manner explaining point by point what the positive and negative aspects of these games are let's start with the review of firewall ultra released on August 24 2023 exclusively on PSVR 2 by first contact Entertainment. first off let me say one thing despite firewall zero hour being the previous chapter and running on an outdated and less powerful platform compared to Ultra, namely the PSVR, the difference between the two chapters is 10 to 1 in favor of Zero Hour. Perhaps for this reason, most of the criticism on this game have come from the user base that spent hundreds of hours on Zero Hour, and maybe because of this confidence from the first chapter, first contact entertainment must be miscalculated because they must have thought they had a real hit on their hands and it was already in their pocket instead things are turning different but let's take a step back firewall ultra offer a gameplay based on achieving certain objectives and the average player of this genre is rarely interested in the store the heart of this game is in fact multiplayer specifically pvp which to simplify the explanation of what it offer can be associated with Rainbow Six Siege. Two teams alternate their objectives between attack and defense, where the attacker have to hack a computer while the defenders have to protect it. The team that complete its task at the end of the five minutes or eliminate the opposing team wins. These modes take place on eight maps. Nothing new since most of these are the same but with some tweak to make them look a bit older, given that the whole game is set five years after the event of Zero Hour. And here comes maybe the first flaw that becomes apparent when you visually compare the maps of the two chapters. In fact, while you can notice graphical improvements, more details, better management of lights and shadows, what stands in the shortness of this leap, considering that despite Firewall Ultra using a real engine 5, it doesn't show a significant generation leap. As a veteran player of Zero Hour and tactical titles, I didn't find find any particular difficulties in achieving the objectives. Maybe because I often play it with equally skilled people. However, this was only when matchmaking worked, which was about one out of every three times. And no, I'm not joking. Often I had to restart the search two or three times to get into a match. I've been handling guns for 20 years now and Every time I play a title of this kind, I cannot help but analyze how weapon mechanics are handled. Handling, aiming, replicating the function of the weapons and many other things that a player, even with thousands of hours of experience, will never notice since they've never held a real weapon. In Zero Hour, without the aim controller, aiming with a weapon never was a problem. Everything was quite precise and realistic and I expected a big step forward given the capabilities of the PSVR 2 controllers but instead was tough managed to aim in with pistol and think about it I got more satisfaction from aiming in games like Resident Evil 8 and Synapse and things got even worse when switching from the pistol to the rifle I also found the choice of using L1 or R1 as button to enter aiming 
Sleeping Mode, yes, you read that right. In Firewall Ultra, just like in Crossfire, you have to press a button to use the weapon's optics. But the biggest problem is that the same button is used to interact with doors, pick up objects, revives teammates and so on. Then, just like in Crossfire, there is this annoyance of the automatic shoulder rest, also managed by the same button. So, when you rise your weapon and try to aim, you see the gun move backward and stick to your shoulder. Now, there's a positive and negative aspect to this. It increases stability and precision, since when you don't use it, aiming is very shaky. Still, it kills players immersion. Especially because, once again, if you have basic knowledge of how to handle a weapon, you will notice that this feature forces you to position your hands in an unnatural way. The problem? Do not ends here. At the moment, Firewall Ultra is only available in an arcade hybrid version, a simplified mode that combines arcade mechanics such as automatic reloading that cannot be set manual with mechanics from fast-paced uh, shooter-like Call of Duty when it should require the more tactical approach and this is because enemies can take a lot of hits before go down. But let's pretend for a moment that being not a war veteran but just a casual player, you manage to get used to the quirks of Firewall Ultra's control. Even in this case, you should learn to deal with the series of bugs logging this game. Some of these are hilarious, like the contorted arms or body position of your teammates that would make the Kama Sutra seem like a children's book, while others deliberately ruin the game experience, such as input lag clunky movements, interface problems, and, as I mentioned before, matchmaking, which is maybe the, the most frustrating thing. These bugs will surely be fixed with patches, but for now, they exist. Oh, I almost forgot, Firewall Ultra is a live service game, which means you can unlock additional equipment that gives you advantages by collecting in-game cryptocurrency. Of course, if you play without paying, you'll have to spend weeks to unlock something noteworthy. Alternatively, you can buy crypto packs starting from $5. However, the beauty of playing a newly released live service game is that developers often offer in-game currency as compensation for fixing certain bugs. In fact, with the release of the latest patch that addressed some minor bugs, players were offered with 100,000 credits. I've got some good feelings from the haptic feedback of the controllers and the adaptive triggers. Although I'm not over impressed by these things. It's a matter of personal preference, since I prefer a more polished game, even if it's arcade, but with mechanics that works well, rather than nice tactile sensation while struggling with the game control. Not even eye tracking made me feel more immersed or facilitated in any way. Mainly because rather than having on-screen menus, I will have preferred weapon holster or focus for ammunition and grenades, greater realism in interactions like being able to open the doors with my hands or physically throw a grenade instead of pressing a button. However, this is only a partial verdict because the complete game has yet to come. In the meantime, know that these are the pros and cons you will find in Firewall Ultra in its current state. For the full version of the game with the Ultra mode, which will offer greater realism and more immersive experience, we will have to wait until the end of this year or the beginning of the next. If these issues are resolved, Firewall Ultra could match or even surpass the success of its predecessor. However, at the moment, I find not worth investing in a title with many problems and that requires spending on contents that don't even exist yet. For now, if you own a PSVR 2 and you are looking for a shooter capable of offering excellent, immersive, fairly realistic mechanics, complete and worth it, 
this genre, my advice is to avoid Firewall for now and maybe shift your attention to other titles like Pablo. And if you want to know more about it, let me know down in the comments, but I will talk to you about it in another video. Thanks for watching the full video, like, subscribe and keep following. That's all from Ben, see you next time, stay safe with Rob.